servant. He is the second in command of the land. He is known by many and loved by, by all. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming to the podium a warm and thunderous UPSA applause to the gentleman who truly needs no introduction, His Excellency, the Vice President of the Republic, Dr. Mahamudu Baumia. Thank you very much. The Honorable Minister for Energy, Chairman of the University Council, members of the University Council, Vice Chancellor, and other officers of the University, UPSA members of the congregation, alumni, distinguished invited guests, 2021 graduating class, friends from the media, ladies and gentlemen, it is a great pleasure to join you for this special 13th congregation and I acknowledge the council chairman and the vice chancellor for this special invitation. This event is special to me for two reasons. First, it is the graduation of our latest crop of leaders from the School of Graduate Studies and the Law Faculty. Congratulations to all of you. Second, it is the conferment of an honorary doctorate degree on Honorable Dr. Manti Opoku Prempe, AKA Napo. The current minister for energy, and a hard-working former minister for education, who executed government's bold flagship program, the Free SHS, with distinction. In recognition of his many accomplishments, Honorable Matthew Poku Prempe was recently invited by the United Nations Sustainable Development Solutions Network to serve on its Mission 4.7 High Level Advisory Count Group as an honorary meritorious member. I'm very happy that he has also been recognized <laughs> and honored at home by the UPSC. A well deserved honor, and it reinforces the high regard many have of him and his remarkable leadership role in the promotion of quality education in Ghana. Mr. Chairman, on behalf of His Excellency, the President, Nanado Danko Akufuado, I take this opportunity to commend UPSA for your immense contribution to education in Ghana. For more than 55 years, the university has lived up to its responsibilities of training and educating professionals. Your graduates serve in various distinguished capacities and institutions as they contribute their quota to national development. As this graduating class leaves and enters the world of work, you're going to be entering a world that is changing. Of course, this is a world that is dealing currently with the COVID pandemic. It is also a world that we in Ghana, as in many other African countries, have been facing challenges um, that we are dealing with, and these are challenges of national development. It is very important that we understand that whilst we have many, many problems and we can list them, we have all, we've written books and articles talking about our problems in many spheres of life. If you get into the public sector, 
you would find, you know, talk about problems of obtaining basic public services, the bureaucracy involved that we faced when we came into office, issues of obtaining passports, driver's licenses, registering a business, clearing goods at the ports, and so on, were all issues that we had to contend with. The non-existence of a unique identity for our population was another major problem. The lack of interoperability for mobile money services and amongst mobile inter um, operators was another one. The financial exclusion, so many people not having access to bank accounts or accounts from which they could execute financial services. 70% of our adult population had no bank account in that re respect. The problem of ghost names on our public payroll, the difficulty of accessing credit, the lack of address systems, the narrow tax base, in fact we had uh, only about 4% of our adult population registered for taxes, that is, had tax identification numbers at the end of 2016. This is from independence to that, you know, and that tells you how narrow the tax base was from which to deal with the development challenges. Multiple sales of land, um, no database on properties, lack of transparency, um, and, and so on. So we, we are, we are dealing with a lot of these problems in, in, in the economy uh, and in the society. And what we basically said was that we have to attack these problems and find solutions to these problems because we had talked about them and talked about them for many, many, many years. And therefore, the task that faced us was to build a system that was based on data and not on who you know or the discretion of individuals. If you look at the system that we were inheriting, a lot of activities were based on discretion and on whom you know. A system that promotes transparency and accountability, a system that eliminates corruption in the provision of government services, and a system that works for the poor and the vulnerable and the excluded in society. We decided that the, one of the best ways as we entered this fourth industrial revolution in, in the global economy, um, one of the best ways Ghana could really position itself in the global economy and as well address all of these problems that I've been talking about was to pursue a strategy of digitization of the economy. And this is why over the last four years, under the leadership of His Excellency the President, we have been focused on this. Some people have wondered, says, oh, Dr. Bahomia, you used to talk a lot about the economy. You are now only talking about digitization. Um, but they, didn't, they don't really see the link, that the two are one and the same, because you need uh, to build the fundamentals of the economy. And the fundamentals, building the fundamentals of the economy lies in putting in place that system that promotes transparency and accountability and fights corruption. As you enter the public sector, you will see that you'll be challenged by demons and principalities. <laughs> the demons and principalities are all over the place. And you have to fight them. And we are going to fight them. And we are going to win that battle. One of the key tools that we have implemented in this fight has been the national ID system. Many people haven't recognized the importance of it. But today, Ghana has a national ID system, a biometric system, both iris and, and fingerprints. And it's a unique ID uh, for every um, individual in the population. So far, 
we have been able to issue 15.5 or register 15.5 million people under the national ID system. So we've moved from around zero to 15.5 million. And that is major. That is a really major for us because now everybody has a unique ID, which means that you cannot hide. You are, there is transparency in the system. There used to be a time when you could go to a bank and borrow money and then go and change your name and go to another bank and borrow money and then do that again and again. It used to happen. Uh, sorry, it's no longer going to be able to happen. Because with the national ID, we have brought in transparency and we are linking all bank accounts to the national ID, for example. And, 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 that, and that is going to be very important as, as, as we go forward. We, uh, I will talk about the linkages in a moment. We've also implemented a national digital property addressing system. This was a big problem. The addresses look, uh, pro of properties in Ghana, I think we had only about 10% or less of addresses uh, for properties in Ghana. Today, with the National Digital Property Addressing System, every property or every location in Ghana has a unique address. So we have 100% coverage for every property in Ghana. 100% coverage. And it is going to be very, very important. We have identified 7.5 million properties, including properties in, in the villages. And as you can see, the process of putting address plates on each process, property is ongoing, and we expect to complete that process by next year. All the 7.5, even the huts in the villages will have their house numbers, their digital addresses, all on plates are on them. And this is going to be very, very important, as you know, for e-commerce, for knowing where everybody is, for the delivery of government services, and so on. We've also implemented a very unique interoperability for, for our mobile money. 30% of our population had, uh, no, uh, had bank accounts, the adult population. Most people had mobile money accounts. And we just decided that, well, then we should do interoperability between the bank account and the mobile money account so that a mobile money account can function like a bank account. It's a simple idea. We put it together, our people have been able to do it. And today, Ghana is the only country in Africa that has been able to do this. And we have been able to do this. And so it has moved the number of people with access to financial services through an account, be it mobile money or uh, bank account, from the 30% to 90% as we speak today. And that is a major growth. Ghana, it, that mobile money interoperability has also made Ghana the fastest growing mobile money market in Africa. And last year, mobile money transactions in Ghana totaled $100 billion equivalent, or 592 billion Ghana CDs. So it is impacting on the economy, and we brought in the universal QR code. Uh, we've digitized operations at the passport office, at the DVLA, and we are uh, doing so um, also at the births and deaths registry. In fact, we've, we are 80% of the way down on births and deaths registry, and by next year, anybody who is born, by the grace of God, if the process is committed, regardless of where you are born, the, at birth, you will be given your national ID card number. And then it will enter the database. Uh, and so that will follow you through school all the way till, till you die. Uh, uh, <laughs> hopefully not too soon. <laughs> yeah, but it will make our census down the road very, very easy because everybody who dies will get off the database, who is born will get on the database, and, and we will have much more accurate data uh, as, as, as we move forward. Now, by, just by linking the national ID number and making it your tax identification number, we solved a real a little problem. You know that when I, I said that only 4% of people at the end of 2016 had tax identification numbers of, in Ghana, 4% of the adult population. 
had tax. So we said, okay, how do we solve this problem? Well, why don't we make the Ghana card the tax identification number? Immediately we did that. As of June this year, we increased the number of people registered for tax purposes from 4% to 86%. So you are, you are really, by doing that, expanding the tax base of the economy. And we know that uh, by next year, we will be over 90%. But you, you look at it from independence to 2016, we we're just at about 4%. Now, within four years, we've moved from that 4 to 86%. And that is really major. We've done similar for, for the SNIT. We've done similar for the NHIS and linking them with that. So it's a new economy that we are building. Uh, and, 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 and it is going to be uh, real um, major, major. We are in the education sector, um, as, as you know, COVID-19 presented many challenges across several sectors of our economy, including the educational sector. But despite the challenges, a number of universities, including UPSA, have been able to leverage the technology and digitization to support academic work. And access to internet and, inter and connectivity ensured that academic work, commercial transactions, social interactions, and other academic and administrative activities were uninterrupted. As the chair mentioned, government has initiated a free Wi-Fi project to provide Wi-Fi connectivity to 700, 722 public senior high schools, 46 colleges of education, 16 regional offices, 260 district education offices, and so far 13 public universities have joined. And this is part of the work output of Dr. Matthew Opoku Prempe. The benefits of a free Wi-Fi project for promoting education is enormous. Not least, it will ensure continued learning more importantly, lecturers and teachers and students will have access to the necessary educational information to enhance teaching, learning, and research in our universities and colleges across the country. Just this morning, I looked at uh, some, a news item which tells me that Ghana, this internet thing, we are taking it seriously. We are topping Africa in terms of free, the fixed broadband, this high-speed internet. Ghana tops high-speed internet in Africa as of June 2021. We beat South Africa, we beat Egypt, and we beat Mauritius and Cote d'Ivoire. So we are, we are not doing too badly, even though there's more to be done, as the Vice Chancellor uh, made mention of in terms of increasing access. But it's clear that we are, we are on the right path. Digitization is a catalyst for every youth uh, in, 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 Ghana, uh, in Ghana, and we are going to spare no effort uh, in, 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 in getting this done. In line with the digitization agenda, I'm told that UPSA is also close to migrating to a smart and paperless electronic platform for its day-to-day -day administration to keep up with international standards. Government acknowledges the forward-thinking approach of the university. In addition, the university is equally promoting uh, in our students the culture of giving back to society through its different initiatives. And I've been informed recently that the Faculty of Accounting and Finance trained more than 60 small business owners in bookkeeping and customer relationship management. Your Community Action Initiative on free remedial classes for senior high school students studying English mathematics and integrated science is also commendable. The UPSA infrastructural development projects um, have been informed that two student hostels and a multi-purpose twin tower building are progressing steadily, and this will help improve student intake. As I conclude, I once again congratulate our graduating class here today. This is an important moment in your lives and the lives of your family. Graduation presents the culmination of your many years of hard work and sweat through COVID. 
For UPSA, it must be gratifying to see the results of the contribution you have made in molding these soon-to-be graduates to become professionals ready for the world of work and ready to solve the myriad of issues confronting the nation and the well-being of our society. Better a good society requires men and women ready to use intellect and knowledge to addressing society's problems and finding society to the benefit of, of many. A good society requires a generation of citizens who are always looking for opportunities to lift up the weak in society, opening the doors wider for the less privileged in society. And it also requires respect for our fellow citizens and a desire to brighten the corner wherever you are. Mother Ghana needs you, your intellect, your knowledge, your discipline, and your dedication to work. The graduating class of 2021, I am proud of you, and I know you will make a difference in Ghana. I wish you well in your endeavors, and I thank you very much for your attention. May God bless you, and may God bless our homeland Ghana. Thank you.